Thanks very much everyone for attending this morning. So this is our webinar series talk with us and the first session that we are going through is dispelling the myths of menopause in the workplace. So um, at TalkWorks, some of you may be familiar with us already. Um, we help leaders build healthy, engaged, resilient teams through therapy, training and strategy. And this morning's session is dispelling the myths of menopause, where we will discuss menopause and the biological changes that take place. Some of the symptoms um, with the goal of separating the facts from the myths surrounding menopause. And our two fantastic speakers this morning are Sharon MacArthur, also known as Miss Menopause, who works across every business sector, private and public, serving many global organizations to deliver menopause awareness, training and menopause education for all. And also the wonderful Dr. Jen Cottam, who's the clinical director and founder of TalkWorks. That's brilliant. Thanks, Dara. So hi, Sharon, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's lovely to see you. It's been ages since we've caught mm -hmm. up and I'm really looking forward to hearing all about the menopause with you today. Um, I wonder if we should start off by a bit of a biological explanation. What on earth is the menopause? Back to basics. What is it? Well, it's it's a catastrophic loss of estrogen, really, is is really if you had to put it in a nutshell. But I suppose it, I'm not really one for talking about medical stuff because I think that can be a big turn off. But it's really ultimately a point in life where somebody's fertility ends, if you want to think of it in any other term than that. Um, so it, it's really, really interesting because every single person on the planet is going to be impacted by menopause, either directly or indirectly. Now, there's also something out there called the andropause. So a lot of men will say, Sharon, what about men and the menopause? So I'm going to be super controversial and say mm -hmm. it's got that name, the andropause. But my personal view is it's not the equivalent. So okay. what I ac what I accept is that male hormones decline with age. I absolutely accept that. But as a species, male fertility does not end on mass as a species. So it's not the equivalent. So in other words, a, a guy can father a child the day he drops down dead. You might have been reading about people in the press, you know, movie stars being fathering children in their eighties these last few months. And I think Charlie Chaplin was in his 90s. But what I'm going to say is most, the majority of women, their fertility will have ended by around 55. OK. Uh, so that menopause so something is look, something to look forward end. to. Yeah. Look, yes. <laughs> bring it on. So coming, coming to, to the end to. of our yeah. fertility for women. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the the ending of our, of our periods. And I guess the first myth that we're about to debunk is that it's got nothing to do with work have you got any thoughts on that when people say you know well menopause is something that happens at home um it's nothing to do with the workplace we should be just keeping this private and keeping it to ourselves and dealing with it at home well it's a, well it's a massive business issue to be honest so I, mm -hmm. I say all of the time you know if you care about mental health if you care about well-being if you care about equality diversity initiatives in your organization Mm -hmm. then menopause actually almost hands down beats every single one of those things that I've just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And the really, I think, shocking statistic and the thing that keeps drawing me back to this subject is 100% of reproducing females are going to have to go through menopause whether they like it or not. So if you if you were to almost look at mental mental health or mental ill health, now most organisations, quite rightly so, have been doing loads of brilliant, brilliant work around around that subject. Absolutely the right thing to do. But I don't know about you, but I hope and I wish that the smallest percentage of any workforce would ever suffer from, let's call it mental ill health. Mm -hmm. Menopause mm -hmm. is a hundred percent. So 100%. if you metaphorically put menopause in a ring with mental ill health. It'll be a full scale knockdown every single time by <laughs> menopause. Mm -hmm. So if you in as you know, in an organization think you've got all of those things covered and menopause isn't part of the conversation, then there's a massive, massive hole. And that's because it doesn't just directly impact those female colleagues in your organization. It impacts everybody else indirectly. So you might be surprised to know that I'm doing most of my work at the moment up and down the UK with lots of male dominated organisations because they are starting to realise 
that although those male colleagues might not work in particular areas of a business which are female dominated, but the chances are if they identify as male heterosexual, that they're going home to wives, partners, girlfriends, who would all at some point in their own life will be going through menopause. So if you think you're working in manufacturing, those individual male colleagues could be operating equipment, heavy machinery, drivers. And because of the, you know, they might be sleep deprived, their relationships might be breaking down. So this actually impacts every single person in your business, whatever their title, whatever their gender, whatever, you know, however they identify, every single person in any organisation is going to be impacted. And I think what's really fascinating about the subject is it's been hiding in plain sight for far too long. For many, many, many years. You're absolutely right. And there's that huge impact on the entire workforce. I read a statistic um, just over the weekend when I I was thinking about this event this morning, Mm. which said 14 million workdays are lost in the UK every single year because of the menopause, because of menopause symptoms. I mean, that's astonishing. 14 million. Well, it Absolutely. And that's just if if women are even saying that that's the menopause. So most women may not even wish to share or sadly, yes. the majority of women don't even know that it's that's what's causing them to feel off kilter. Yeah. And that's really the shocking thing about menopause is it, 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 it doesn't have a linear process and you can't often figure it out because it doesn't follow a set routine or a set pattern. So often you or I might spot symptoms in others before they spot them in themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's, again, what's really, I I keep saying, I have to say, Jen, it truly is the gift that keeps on giving if you choose to let it. So my message out there is, let's not choose to let it. Yeah, let's Let's talk about it. Yeah, totally. And and I think I hear you saying your work at the minute is often around educating male workforces on the importance of the menopause. Um, but also the women over 50 are the fastest growing demographic yeah, in yeah. the workforce today. Yeah, aren't yeah. They? So increasingly, that's well, Woo-hoo. that's us. <laughs> so increasingly women are working longer and having to work whilst experiencing the menopause, which perhaps didn't happen 30, 40, 50 years ago. Well, it's a perfect storm. And I say this in the work I do all the time. And that's because the gorgeous government, and this isn't just a UK phenomenon, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Our pensionable ages are being extended because that means we're living longer. So pensionable ages are keeping in step with that. So that means for the first time in history, we've Mm -hmm. got more and more women having to live and work longer in the workforce than ever before. And that trend is just set to continue. So I'm 55. So what I keep saying, if you're younger than me, my pensionable age is currently 67 Mm -hmm. so for any younger people on this call or out there in the world guess what news I've got for you with regards to your pensionable age it's only going one way and sadly that's up so if I'm being asked to retire at 67 at the age of 55 if you're in your 30s goodness knows what might be happening to your pensionable age in the future so I'm not trying to sell anyone a pension but do bear that in mind Mm -hmm. because what that means is for the very first time more and more women having to do that. And I was talking to somebody just a couple of days ago. And if you think about it now in the 21st century, most households, if they can, they need both individuals working in the household just to keep things going. Yeah. Because, you know, especially in these last, you know, 6, 12, 18 months. So most individuals need to work in the household. So, you know, gone are the days where maybe like me mom and me grandma, they maybe didn't work at all. Say me grandma didn't in her era. And me mom maybe worked only part time for quite a large number of years. So I'm not being disparaging when I say, if I'd asked me mom and me grandma, what did you do to manage your menopause? They would have said, e pet, in our day, we just got on with it. Mm-hmm. Now, often the biggest stressor they might have had would be with the boil the taties over for the tea. You know, and I'm not being rude when I say that, but I would defy my mom and grandma to be parachuted into the 21st century and do the, all of the type of work that we are all being asked to do right now. It just couldn't and wouldn't happen. So, again, this whole belief, I think, that a lot of women think um, I've just got to get on with it is mm-hmm. really, really out of date and something that I'm absolutely discouraging women to do. Um, if menopause is impacting the quality of their life. So this has got to be the biggest gift I can give everybody today. You know, is the menopause impacting the quality of your life or anybody you love, know and respect? And if the answer is yes, doing nothing Mm -hmm. shouldn't be the route that you take. 
Mm -hmm. And I guess there's there's two issues, isn't there? There's the first one you identified, which is, am I going through the menopause or is somebody mm. going through the menopause? And if I if I am, mm. then what do I do about it? So yeah. that that question about how do we know if we're experiencing perimenopause? Yeah. What, how, how do we find out more about that, Sharon? Well, I think Whitney Houston had a song, didn't she? Just trust your feelings. How will I know? Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question and it's a really almost an answerable question. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because, as I've just said earlier, um, well, every single person is going to have a unique menopause. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it incredibly difficult. So everyone's going to have a unique experience of it. And let me say, and this is a really, again, important important point the majority of women out there are going to begin to encounter symptoms of menopause months and even years before they notice a change in their periods mm -hmm. that's if they eat now that's if they're even having them jen because what and i keep talking about this all the time menopause terminology has not in my opinion caught up with the 21st century because a lot of women out there won't be having periods because they're using things like the depo injection for contraception, mini pills, marina coils. So again, this is why this subject for me is quite out of date and you've dusting off the shelf and just re refocusing on. But mm -hmm. like I say, the best thing I can say to you is, have you started to notice a change in the quality of your life or anybody you love, know and respect? And if the answer is yes, then get checked out and I think the other big if we're talking about myth is um the majority of women will begin to encounter menopause usually in and around their 40s yes. so I think another big myth is that menopause only happens to women who are way 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 older you know in their 50s mm -hmm. even in their 60s if you'd asked me several years ago embarrassingly I would have said women in their 80s because I was totally 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 <laughs> ignorant about the subject let me tell you you know this is before I knew any of this stuff so I think we've got to bring down this scale and this thought process. And I keep saying, has anyone thought of using this phrase or maybe used it in the past? And maybe you can say that, notice my own hand is up here. Mm -hmm. um, women of a certain age. Of a certain age, yeah. And of a certain age. And I keep saying, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. But what we have to understand is women technically can happen to women at any age. And again, that's another myth. And the saddest case I've read about was a young girl of at the age of 12. Now, obviously, that's exceptional, mm -hmm. but it just means that technically women can go through the menopause at any age. But the majority of women out there are going to start to notice changes mentally, physically and often both in and around their 40s. Yes. So like I say, it's about thinking about and again, where this doesn't really help a lot of us is a lot of we know statistically don't we that women are having children later in life. Mm -hmm. So you could find a situation where you maybe recently had your, you know, had your family and then, you know, and all those hormonal changes that take place through pregnancy, then you think, right, I'm coming back to work. All I've got to do is get back in the saddle and get to me retirement. And then menopause might come along, you know, a couple of years later, if that, and make you think that you've got early onset dementia. And that is the most, sadly, the most common thing that women believes happening to them. They think they've got yes early onset dementia and that's probably one of the biggest motivators that motivates me to do this work because that means that women therefore from a workplace point of view are, are leaving because what they're doing leaving the is they're putting, yeah. yeah well yeah. they're putting two and, and two droves. together they're coming they're coming up they're coming up and putting two and two together and coming up with 46 telling mm -hmm. themselves they can't do the work anymore and this might be despite the fact they've done that work for maybe mm -hmm. years and years and years but they wake up one day Think and they've lost the plot, as in brain fog. So brain fog is one of the most commonly other secondly reported symptoms to me. So what I, when I say brain fog, what I mean is the inability to remember simple words and phrases mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you know you know. Now I feel awful because I used to laugh at me nana and me grandma who used to call us the cat's name, the dog's name, you know, my brother's name, and then loads of other names. And then in recent years, I was doing the same. So I feel awful about that now. But hormones are powerful, powerful things that make us the women that we are. And menopause really is the ultimate decline of hormones, so much so that it ends their fertility. So if you think about it, is it any wonder that we are mentally, physically and often both um, impacted by menopause in such a, you know, often a catastrophic way? So it's really, really important. Like I say, the biggest gift I can give anyone today is if you've noticed a change mentally, physically or both, please don't do nothing and please go and go and check it out. Let's let's sit with those mental symptoms just for a moment. So you've described the brain fog, difficulty mm. finding words, trouble with mm. verbal fluency. Mm. 
What else? What other mental symptoms are we talking about, Sharon, that people are reporting in terms of menopause? Well, number one is anxiety. Anxiety, yeah. Number yeah. one's anxiety, yeah. really. Yeah. And yeah. then if I had to look at the top five, not necessarily just about, you know, the you know, the 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 the, 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 the mental illness side of things where so mm -hmm. I would say number one's anxiety, closely yeah. followed by brain fog, which I've just described. Yeah. Um next would be um something like exhaustion. Yeah. Now, exhaustion, a lot of women describe as something entirely different than they've ever described before. So I used to feel personally like someone had pulled a plug out. So literally, I'd be fine one minute and then the plug Just was fine. out and I literally mm -hmm. had no energy at all. Um, and then sweats, so day sets, night sweats. But not everybody's going to demonstrate obvious signs of perspiring. So don't think that it might not be happening to them because you might internally get those feelings but you might not outwardly demonstrate that. So don't think just because somebody doesn't look hot that they're not feeling like that inside. Mm -hmm. And I guess mm -hmm. the other strange thing is, Jen, nobody tells you when you're having a hot flush that you can't escape your own body. So there would right. have been many times over the last few years where I would have tried to rip my shirt open and put my boobs against a cold window, which, let's be honest, <laughs> in the workplace would not necessarily be appropriate. Um, and then probably the other one, the most other common one, and this is the one that really impacted me the most, was insomnia or the inability to, to remain asleep. Mm -hmm. So me personally, I never had an issue getting to sleep, mm -hmm. but it used to turn into two in the morning where literally beep, eyes on springs couldn't literally shut my eyes any further. And it got so bad that I say menopause nearly killed me because I fell asleep at the wheel of my car Goodness when I was me. driving at sleep. Yes. Because I just couldn't, I just could no longer sleep. So I keep saying, when you're thinking about not just, you know, your female colleagues, think of those male colleagues who could also be sleep deprived because of what's going on in the bed next to them. Mm -hmm. And the impact that might be having on their ability to be productive in the workplace, to operate equipment and heavy machinery, to operate, you know, their drivers, forklift truck drivers, whatever they might be. And again, the ultimate breakdown of relationships Mm -hmm. um, and I find it really, really interesting, although nobody wants to really connect the dots. But if you look at suicide, it peaks between for women between 45 and 55. Mm -hmm. And you could say, well, is there a connection? And I would say, you know, if I'm just giving my personal opinion, I would say there's got yes. to be. There's absolutely got to be. Uh, yes, absolutely. And I think in terms of what we would see in the clinic here, insomnia is a huge part mm -hmm. of the presentation that we would see mm -hmm. for menopausal women so insomnia mm -hmm. and anxiety mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. as you say associated suicidality as well um yeah, so yeah. We definitely need to be talking about this more yeah. what what should employers do then what's a menopausal friendly workplace look like sharon well the first of all the first thing you've got to do is get educated Mm -hmm. That's what you've got to do. So educate, educate, educate. And this is education for everybody. So, for example, the work that I do is completely inclusive. It doesn't matter whether you send me male, female, manager, non-manager, or that everybody can come along to hear this information. And I say all the time, Jen, learning about this, in my opinion, can't harm anybody. It can only help everybody. And that's because everybody, one way or another, will be touched by this. So let me tell you an interesting story. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we know, for example, don't we, that younger people are living longer at home because they often can't afford, afford to, to leave. Sure. You know, it's just too expensive to leave. So I had a younger woman in one of my sessions several years ago now, which was really quiet, till eventually she, she kind of shouted up. She went, I think me mum might be going through the menopause. I was like, all right, OK. She went, well, I left for work for this morning. She threw a butter dish at me head. Now, whilst I said that, well, that's not a classic symptom of menopause, I said, she said but, as I said, but I, I kind of take your point. And in her own words, she said, she's turned into a hell beast. Oh, now, she said, I, she said, I love her, but I really, really don't like her. Now, what was really interesting about this situation was a mother didn't know she was in the early stages of menopause. We would call it perimenopause. So just by attending one of my sessions, she was able to go home, have an open, honest adult conversation with her mom encourage her mother to go and seek help and support and advice some mother chose mm -hmm. the, the medical route and she ended up on hrt hormone replacement therapy so just by attending a menopause session not only had you got a younger woman who's now more prepared for our own menopause as and when the time comes you had a much more engaged employee because this younger woman was now having a better time in ho at home mm -hmm. or because she came to a menopause session Absolutely. so so not having any more at home in terms yeah, of well, what's going to happen is, next to me well, with mom dealing yeah, with the menopause, 
Absolutely. So when you say what do employers need to do? Well, you need to educate yourself. And that means mm -hmm. best practice for me would you include everybody in the conversation. None of this, Sharon, can you just work with our women of a certain age? Remember, I'm going to try and not go down that route anymore. Um, and then the next thing is, I always say from a management point of view, and again, my background is I used to be a senior leader in a FTSE 100 company. So I'd like to think I'm recently or fairly qualified to talk about what practical things you can do. And I always think it's all it's all about simplicity. It's all about tiny things that make a big difference. So all I would say is if you're a leader in a business, you know, an owner, a leader, a senior person in, in your business, I, I always believe that line managers and leaders in businesses aren't paid to have all the answers. But I truly believe you're paid to listen. And every single person who comes to you will have a unique story to tell about their own menopause. And I think that's the most important thing. You hear my story. You really hear me. And the other thing to realise is I'm a bit, maybe a little bit unpopular out there because a lot of organisations in this menopause space would have you believe that you need to do lots of complicated things. I'm saying I don't believe you need to do that. What you need to do is you need to look at what you currently do, what you currently have within your organisation. And what we're going to do is we're going to repurpose it. So an example I would give is most organisations out there will have a, a process, a plan, a, a rule around the disclosure of pregnancy. So if somebody disclosed a pregnancy at work, what might you do? Well, you might offer them like a car parking space near the office. You might offer me a workstation assessment and I might end up with some equipment like a footrest or a desk plan. You might enable me to have time off for appointments. So what I'm saying is to organisations out there, what you're going to do is you're going to look at what's currently classed as your small reasonable adjustments. And what you're going to do is you're going to just repurpose them for menopause if you need them. Mm -hmm. So you don't, we're not starting from scratch, we're not reinventing the wheel. And I think there's way, way, way too much fear being pumped into this space where you make it feel like, oh my goodness, it's this huge, nasty, amorphous thing. It's terrifying. We need to do all these special things. If you've recently embedded, you know, mental health and well-being initiatives, you know, we weren't talking about this stuff maybe five, ten years ago. If you've done that and you think, think you're doing a good job. Menopause, what I'm providing through the services I, I provide is I'm giving you more information that enables you and your leadership community to understand more about root causes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you might have somebody rock up who's saying that they're feeling really anxious and that's the reason they've been off sick, you know, for the last few weeks. If menopause becomes part of that return to work process, you may unearth the fact that the root cause of that anxiety could be menopause related. Right. So it's all about, like I say, simplicity and just understand. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. OK, so we've got so what employers can do is they can provide some education. So attend mm -hmm. some of your brilliant workshops on menopause. We can make sure that line managers know how to listen to their teams. And we know that the best indicator of an engaged workforce is that relationship that somebody has Absolutely. with their immediate line manager. So line managers being able to listen and then repurposing existing reasonable adjustments and policies that we've got in place for other staff for people who happen to be experiencing menopause. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Sharon. I've, I can see we've got Dara on the screen yeah, here. Yeah, just going to give you some time check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So shall, shall we take it, a few questions yeah. here? Yeah, so I'm going to uh, allow everyone to um, take their mics or cameras back up, uh, back off. Um, but also I've seen a question come through on the chat. So we'll start with that one. And that's from Tracy. Tracy saying, I was once allowed to do a return to work interview with a colleague because our male manager didn't feel equipped to have that conversation. He was lovely, but realised he didn't know how to tackle it. I think it's great you are raising awareness. Thank, thank you so much. Oh, you. And I think, and I'm, I'm going to pick on male managers, and I'm sure it's nobody that we would know, but I have had quite a bit of feedback over the years where some male managers, you go to speak to them, and they kind of go with this thing like, women's problems, women's problems, women's problems, oh, I don't need to hear that. And what I'm saying is, if you are in the privileged position of being given the title of leader, manager, whatever that might be, Sadly, that goes with the territory. So male managers in the future, I expect we add, I expect to not hear that piece of feedback any anymore because you are paid to listen. And I often say from a male manager's point of view, if you've been a father, you've probably been at the blood and guts end of female anatomy 
to me. So all I'm saying is, can we get much more in tune with what's going on in the world and that menopause, if you're a leader or a manager in the business, in a business, in any business, the chances are you are going to encounter menopause. So if you're not feeling confident and comfortable because maybe education isn't happening right now, there are loads of different ways that you can educate yourself. You know, there's podcasts like this, you know, there's webinars, there's books, there's a whole host of things. So I would say, you know, I would hope that managers and leaders, whoever they are, wouldn't behave like that in the future. But it is great that you were able to talk to somebody else. But my mission is that everyone in that leadership position surely should be able to create that psychological safety for all of their people. That's why they're in that job. And we've had another one come through from Louise um, saying we have a menopause guidance ready to launch our to our workforce. Any tips Fabulous. on making this impactful? Um, the, the thing is, what I would say is, have you got education to go hand in hand with the documents or however you're rolling that out? Because all I would say is documents and, and policies and guidelines are only as good as the humans that read them. And unless they're launched with some education wrapped around it, you might find that they could sit gathering dust on a shelf because people don't really know what to do, what to do with it. But if I had to give anyone a simple tip, it would be never underestimate the power of just having a conversation. So if you can get any senior people in your business to role model maybe their own stories, that is so, so, so powerful. And also a senior male colleague might talk about an experience, maybe with a wife, partner, or girlfriend that they might be having. A senior woman in your business might, you know, might be able to share their story about menopause. And I think if you can demonstrate and role model and, and, and let people see that they're pushing against an open door, that it's safe, it's again, it's back to psychological safety, isn't it? That it's safe to share stories about menopause. But I think the other thing I would say is, can you check that your policies, procedures, and guidelines tell me as an employee what you expect from me also because I see too many organizations pushing out policies and processes with the best of intentions but they're almost trying to help their people to death and what you're in danger is is breeding in my opinion is prince and princesses who are rocking at the work going well what are you going to do for me one of my big messages if you work with me is but what are you going to do to help yourself because it's really, really important because even if your employer is offering you the most incredible reasonable adjustments as the gift that keeps on giving, menopause is going to be with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So what I always say is it's really important that as an employee, you understand that you have a 50 percent. It's a 50 50 partnership between you and your line manager that you have to join in to, because without that, it's never really going to work. So I would say also check your guidance and your policies to make sure that colleagues know that you know what their part is in the in the role and responsibilities that they have to play about that as well. Isn't and one feel thing. free to share that um that tips documentation with us if you would like us to to eyeball that for you as well, Louise. We'll be more than happy to do that. Yeah. Is menopause taught in schools? I've just seen that come through from Melanie. Well, who knows, Melanie, is the answer I've got for you. It was meant to go in the curriculum in 2020. I've spoken to lots of schools up and down the country. Apparently, the curriculum is only as good as the teachers that implement them. Um, my question was always in this space, what is the quality of the teaching that will be in schools anyway? And if I was to run for, for um, PM, I would say that if I was doing a, a sweep on what should menopause look like in the future, I'd say it was two fundamental things. One, that it's taught in schools from a very young age. You might start to teach the biology of human bodies from, I don't know, seven, eight, nine, ten. But this education needs to go into other years, you know, maybe up to the age of 16, 17, 18, because we know young people are living at home with their parents. And the chances are you're going to end up living with a menopausal mother. Um, in that in that in that regard. So what I'd want to say is the quality of that teaching being extended over several years, not just a couple of lessons at one point. Then the other thing I think that really needs to help happen is that there needs to be a menopause specialist in every single doctor's practice in every practice up and down the land. Absolutely. But there's no sign of that happening anytime soon. And until those two things happen, I often say, Jen, that I I I hope to be made redundant at some point in the future, because that would indicate that this stuff has been solved. The root cause has been solved and tackled. 
but I get the feeling I might be going a few more years. Yet. I think you're going to keep going until that 67, Sharon, if I'm honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> we've oh, we've got oh, another, God. sorry, we've got another comment here from Catherine. Um, I remember being in a very male dominated board meeting with some very senior NHS leaders. One of the senior women could see the admin lady was having a hot flush and immediately ordered a couple of blokes to get the windows open. She didn't go into detail or embarrass yeah. my colleague. She just recognised what was happening and don't think a single block noticed, but it was great to see how we can support each other. We'll yeah. take this one final question as well, if that's all right, and then I'll, I'll yeah. switch yeah, over to um, socials and everything. So if women okay, can take HRT due to previous conditions, e.g. breast cancer, mm. are there places you can signpost them to? Um, I would always signpost to Dr. Louise Newsom just because she's a medical doctor and there is a lot of quackery, I guess, out there. Um, but the other thing I would say is my message is I'm not medically trained. I don't pretend I profess to be. But I would say there are four main categories for anyone to explore when it comes to managing menopause. And remember, one of my main messages to you all is menopause is to be managed not to be endured and that's a really important point so i talk about a medical route which again there's things like ssris which are you know antidepressants which if your main symptom is hot flushes and you've had a cancer scare my understanding is they could still be available to you there's also stuff called vaginal estrogen which is now being safely sold over the counter and again can be transformational for lots of women who've had cancer scares or being told through cancer treatments not to go down the hrt route there's also what i call the herbal route so that just means vitamins, minerals, and there's tons and tons and tons of stuff. Stuff. What I would say is you must do your research and get out of this mindset that just because it sounds natural doesn't mean to say it can't harm you because there are some things out there that can be rather nasty, especially in combination with conventional drugs. Then there's what I call the holistic route. Have you heard of the underwear magnet? So some women lo love a knicker magnet. <laughs> Um, but I'm talking about mindfulness, acupuncture, yoga, you know, meditation. And then there's what I call DIY. So, you know, what do you eat? What do you drink? Do you smoke? What exercise do you take? So what I say to women all of the time in nearly the six years I've been doing this work, I've never met a woman yet who said, Sharon, I've tried everything and none of it's worked. But some of you are going to have to work really, really hard and you know why that's important? Did you know a bit like the advert says, did you know it's because you're worth it? <laughs> you know, and I think that's, again, a really important point that we've got to take better care of ourselves. And if this, whatever it is, is impacting the quality of our lives, that we're going to we're going to do our research. And then the other good thing is, I would say, is the age that I am, if I wanted to do research in the past, I would have had to hop on a bus and go to a library and pull books off a shelf. Most of us have one of these, I'd call it a supercomputer. So the brilliant news in the 21st century is you can type in a couple of things and you might get about 20,000 hits. You know, and you can read stuff now, you can watch it, you can listen to it. You know, there's tons of ways you can take on information. So give it a go and see what you get, see what you find. Yes, thank you very thank much. Thank you well, so much. Any thoughts um, as we are closing off? Any final thoughts from you both? For, for, for me, it's it, it, if, if you think there's anything that's impacting the quality of your life, and, you know, and I know we're talking about menopause, but because menopause has such a varied number of symptoms, weird, wonderful, wild and wacky, it's back to that quality of life question. Because I say all of the time, the chances are if you're in and around your 40s, it's most likely to be menopause related, but it just might not be. So please, please, please start, if you do nothing else after, after this call today, is start to reflect on what is my normal, what is normal for me. And if anything starts to deviate from that, where, you know, you've got physical and mental symptoms are often both, and it's impacting the quality of your life, don't do nothing, do something about it. That will be my closing statement. Sharon yeah, and Jen. And, and I think just what you said there, Sharon, about... It's to be managed, not endured. And there yeah. are things that you can do. We can go to a GP. If the GP doesn't listen, go to another GP. Check out Louise mm -hmm. Newsom. Speak to your employer. And if you're struggling with, with the mental health side of the menopause, again, go to your GP. Come to see a, a you know, provider like ourselves, our, our team. But you shouldn't have to put up with it. And, and you don't, and, and again, if I just didn't say one more thing, I'll say at the age of 55 now, I feel as good as, if not better than when my menopause began. And that's because I really work hard at managing it. 
And that's because, and there's a brutal thing I'm going to say to you all, did you know no human ages more well? So my personal philosophy is why would I not want to maintain or retain the best quality of life that I've got for as long as I've got it? So for me personally, my, my decision was I'm going to take every drug going. So I'm on HRT, transdermal HRT patches. I'm on vaginal HRT. I'm on testosterone. I take vitamin D. I spray magnesium when I need to. And I try to go to the gym as many times as I feel able. So and that's because I think I'm worth it. So again, if you think of nothing else leaving this session today or you're listening, please think about yourself more and how you're going to look after yourself better. Thank you. And who wouldn't want to have as much energy as Sharon seems to have, eh? That <laughs> seems like you're living your absolute best life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. And thanks everyone for uh, joining the call as well. Um, if you have any other thoughts or questions, please feel free to get in touch with um, any of us and we'll be able to um, help you further. Thanks again.